as long as we go viewing in enterprise of administration as genderless women will continue to have option choice in public administration in the end it is written also in public administration right one logic is you do not know so how to write it that will always keep telling because this is how you are going to face in examination if you do not know option choice but you know that like, there is gender perspective in administration so whatever you know on gender perspective especially theoretical one that should have been written read and when you do not know so don't write 150 word read <laughs> write let's say 100 120 not 150 i will tell but there are our people let's say they have written even 200 words read <laughs> since they can write this is how it is <coughs> so but again ek one you are not writing any right content second you are writing two pages uh, means 200 words so why you are writing it that my time you should give in understanding question nahi aata hai to baithe raho read <coughs> anyhow so you should have written the simple kaise there is feminist perspective in public administration a recent perspective his try to address the biasness in public administration in organization theory in organization theory read right, there has been dominance of read right, <coughs> male thinkers read right. so there has been a masculine perspective in organization theory used term organization theory used term public administration read right. that will give keep giving message to examiner he is writing on theory he is writing on theory read right. so in organization theory there has been male perspective male thinkers and let's say that's why they have they have been talking about authority responsibility dominance leadership autonomy read right. managerialism so if you see classical thinkers this is how they talk if you see behavioral thinkers this is how again they talk about this hardly they will see from a feminist perspective the work culture work processes organization the relationships human relationships have also been seen from more <laughs> masculine perspective subordination right so this is how subordination depression frustration right incentivization so <laughs> beat taylor max weber whoever we can see that so they have seen organization from masculine perspective right it was if don't if you do not know this uh, camilla stewart so don't know you know of mary parker foley however there was a thinker mary parker foley she introduced some feminist perspective right <coughs> by bringing human perspective her method of integration right coordination leadership all these things so she is considered to some extent from a feminist because she belong to classical era but she into do certain human aspects right this is how it should have been written i am talking that ki when you don't have knowledge when means when you don't know the question how then you can write right and then you should have written some of the facts ki how feminist perspective the recent feminist perspective there are some analysis of organization and now organizations are changing from feminist perspective means organization culture human relationships are not only for masculine but also for feminine let's say that ki women are let's say so workplace is being made more women friendly not <laughs> people are male friendly right this is how <coughs> in fact in some uh, uh, countries let's say that ki maternity leave is being given with pay right in past there was a demand for only maternity leave but now you have a maternity leave with pay ye example likhna chahiye right <coughs> rather than ki mandrega aur roega jayega this is how done right right <laughs> so <laughs> you write it organizational example इसके बाद नहीं आता है तो डोंट राइट इट ऑलरेडी जितना मार्क्स देना होगा वो एग्जामर देगा मीन्स यू हैव रिटर्न बाई एप्लीकेशन ऑफ सम गेसिंग नॉलेज 
रेड और उसको बढ़ाने से कोई फायदा है नहीं रेड दिस इज हाउ कैन से एंड दिस इज हाउ यू कैन एंड इट रेड एंडिंग इज अगेन इट विल ऑलवेज बी लाइक दिस कि फेमिनिस परस्पेक्टिव हैज फर्दर एंड रिच द फील्ड ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन थियोरी रेड दिस इज हाउ सो इट हैज एंड रिच द फील्ड ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन थियोरी रेड दैट्स वाई देर आर मेनी थियोरिटिकल डायमेंशन इन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन that's why it is considered very dynamic and finish it <coughs> now if you know which can be very rare then how it can be right <laughs> some people know it this is how they have written in beginning take it or leave it option choice means that is a dictionary meaning now even if you know but there is the only difference is that ki they know the meaning and they have written the first two line take it or leave it rest of the answers are same the way other people have written right so, so qualitatively the answer is not different right except that ki the meaning of the term has been written right this is what you can say anyhow <coughs> right option choice means ki no doubt take it leave it that can be dictionary meaning but in public administration here it means let's say that <coughs> women face choice a choice of whether they should accept the masculine dominance and they should not speak against right they will try to adopt in that masculine dominance or they should speak against and get sidelined get ignored right in bureaucratic circle in organization this is the choice or option choice it means let's say that <coughs> the feminist or perspective although it is trying to address some of the <coughs> biasness in organization from gender perspective but women employees in organization face this challenge right and some women will try to adopt masculine culture this is how they have done and they will try to behave like their male right counterparts so they will try to look like also male right lifestyle of male this is how you can so that they can have more acceptance in organization right this is how it happens <laughs> it is a theoretical perspective so some people if feel hurt so they should not it is not my personal perspective it's a theoretical perspective so <coughs> the question is that this is how it is like some women will try to look like men this is how you find look like boy right so although their choice and its sector that may be different but the theory is talking the theory talks like that ki this is how you, you are doing nothing but trying to adopt a masculine dominant culture organization and that's why me, women will also like to uh, smoke cigarette take drink etc because organization is like this right <laughs> so they will become part of that let's say smoking circle drinking circle because in offices also if you have some culture get together party right or some <laughs> drinking party or let's say organization throw a party so when organization throw a party in kanat place so what women will do they will go and drink and let's say smoke cigarette especially the male members so what let's say female members will do in party so they will have to either drink or go out <laughs> or not to go that is also choice <laughs> isn't it so this is called first part this is a choice what to do how long you can avoid and when you are the manager then when female is a manager and she has to throw a party right <laughs> and party means especially in our culture in other culture it may be also party means what you know it right <laughs> <laughs> so without those things it is not party at all kyun bulaya tha jab yahi sab tha 
सो दिस इज हाउ पीपल विल टॉक अबाउट मैस्कुलिन डोमिनेंस तो यू विल हैव टू गिव ऑल दीज एग्जाम्पल्स दे हैव गिवेन सिगरेट स्मोकिंग एग्जाम्पल कैमिला स्टीवर हैज गिवेन दिस एग्जाम्पल लेट लेट एस कम दिस इज हाउ जेंडर पर इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी आर टॉकिंग नॉट सोशोलॉजिकल परस्पेक्टिव राइट शी इज ए थिंकर लेट्स फर्स्ट फिनिश राइट योर क्वेश्चन देन लेट्स से द अदर चॉइस इज दैट इफ यू डू नॉट अडाप्ट यू विल बी ऑलरेडी यू आर आइसोलेटेड और लेट से दैट कि यू बिकम फेमिनिस्ट टाइप यू डिमांड चेंजेज अगेन यू विल बी आइसोलेटेड राइट दिस इज हाउ इट इज so those let's say female members who in the organization they will try to speak against they will try to bring gender friendly environment etc they may be termed as feminist right they may be boycotted right all male biasness you can see let's on organization if you have some experiences of let's say <coughs> one ips officer right if you have read her books etc so you can see how she faced discrimination the first women ips officer don't take the name you can this is how this example could have been written better than manrega example right so <coughs> this is what we have to write in this right and therefore let's say the organization theory means <coughs> thinkers especially the feminist thinkers today now they are trying to contribute or analyze the organizations from gender let's say that gender friendly perspective <coughs> right or gender perspective right so this is how this let's say that ki question is about that you have to write right however let's say that ki gender perspective may be let's say critical <coughs> it may be right to some extent this is how you should have written it may be right to some extent but <coughs> this is how the organization becomes or organizational practices become if you take the reality into consideration right so when let's say that if let's say that it is <laughs> organization and only let's say female members are there in organization so female are in majority male are in minority so possibility is that the organization can become more female friendly and male biasness can be there so we should not the feminist perspective should not let's say become so much critical to the organization theory especially let's say from taylor or max weber or wilson to <laughs> other such thinkers that they may not necessarily have gender biasness right because even let's say that when we have feminist perspective or female thinkers in organization certainly they will also have to right perform some of the task like organization management leadership authority etc and we can find that ki they may also end up behaving in the same fashion read so this is how you should have written in the end yes now you can ask the question no example can be a part of let's say sociological perspective but let's say that ki after all which example we can give in the organization right already we are talking authority responsibility etc can we bifurcate or separate example in sociology and public administration it can be at times very difficult this is yes hmm in fact social uh, influence you are talking it is part of sociology not public administration so that is not a right way to ad address otherwise we will keep talking whether it is sociology or public administration right so this is how you should have written on this let's take next <coughs> yes you can write glass ceiling example no doubt the example you are writing glass ceiling can be written that can be right example thanks <coughs> there is difficulty i guess but generally it happens in first discussion people will some will also write on some websites right if there is problem etc right <coughs> maybe generally we presume ki things are fine but 
then this is how it is not. So maybe next time we'll addressing it means it will not happen. It is not possible. It is not possible. <coughs> See, let's focus on if you can. So, otherwise, people will start telling many things on that. <coughs> Supra system, such system, all these things are part of system. Anyhow, right? <coughs> we are also part of that. So, if we can do, so you can also do. I guess. <coughs> See, the term here is period of orthodoxy. Right. <coughs> Question is on period of orthodoxy. It is very common. You know it. I don't think that. Ki may, uh, I guess ki many people may be writing when they were writing, maybe knowing when they wrote the answer. Right. It's not that you do not know. If you do not know, so let's say major part you do not know. Uh, once again, you should read public administration. Now, all the subsequent perspectives are essentially nothing but uh, revisions and expansions. Elucidate, elucidate means you have to simple make it lucid, make it clear, right? And make it clear, you can make it clear by giving examples. Examples become essential condition for elucidate. This is how it is. Already we have given list of all these remarks. If you have read, so it's okay. If you have not read, so it's not okay. Right. <laughs> so, <coughs> now, there are some people, look in your answer, whether you have used in the entire answer the term revision and expansion. It is not mentioned. Some people will write in the end and hence it is revisionist and, and hence they are a revisionist and expansionist. Right. Always we say that ki at least key terms of the question should be mentioned. If you are not mentioning, you do not have art of writing skill. This is how it is called. It means you are not able to incorporate in your writing skill when you are writing the answer. It is not a matter of that, oh, I forgot. Right. It's simply that it is not part of your writing practices. Yes, I should. Once you read question, yes. Right. Now I begin writing. This is how it is. Means once you read the question, then question is put somewhere else and answer is completed. Right. <laughs> that should not be. Second thing is that ki how much you should write on orthodoxy and how much you should write on them and how you should write. See, different questions can have different perspective. This is how we'll say that. And we are discussing differently, so you should understand it. Right. And you can take a summary of all. So <laughs> this is a question where you have to divide into two parts. One is orthodoxy, second is called revision and expansion. When you are writing about orthodoxy part, so half you give to that orthodoxy part and half you give to the revisionist and expansion, expansionist part. Right. But this we do not find in your answer. Some people will write one paragraph orthodoxy. And the next Suruhogya Kahani wants a human relation to NPM, to post NPM, networks. This is how it is. And <laughs> you write it separately all uh, uh, human relation behavioral system <laughs> npm or npa public choice why to read all write all these things in details right <laughs> that is not a right way to write the answer this is how one or that was the time of 60 mark question one question 60 mark 600 words right so that answer is suitable for that let's say 10 years back or six years seven years back Today you have to write a very simple answer, compact answer, taking into all, use term called organization theory, right? These things you do not use, the broader things. Organization theory, <coughs> formal school of organization theory, behavioral school of organization theory, right? System school, these things you do not use. Rather you use in a very linear way, right? So apart from <laughs> classical approach, other approaches in organization theory, Right. So, <coughs> orthodoxy represents one part of the organization theory. 
revision expansion will represent the rest part of the organization theory this is called broad aspect broad terms read and certainly these things will come from your thinking not from books read <laughs> but these things do not come in fact the key terms have not been explained at all especially orthodoxy what is orthodoxy the instead of writing that orthodoxy already it is written ki world war 1 to world war 2 so why you should repeat it read world war 1 to world war 2 paradigm first paradigm second read they have already mentioned ki still world war second is orthodoxy this is how so this the term orthodoxy has not been explained by any person in the answer this is how we have said we have the experience very simple thing so what you are writing then read you can imagine what we are writing anyhow how to write it simple public administration has experiences many phases many paradigms ऑर्थोडॉक्सी कैन बी कंसिडर वन सच पैराडाइम कोई जरूरी है कि उसको टू पैराडाइम बोलेंगे नॉट से ये ऑर्थोडॉक्सी टू पैराडाइम वन टिल ट्वेंटी सेवन एंड नेक्स्ट इज ट्वेंटी सिक्स एंड नेक्स्ट इज ट्वेंटी सिक्स ट्वेंटी सेवन टू थर्टी सेवन वही वो राइटिंग अरे पैराडाइम का कोई पेटेंट किसी ने तो करवाया नहीं है so you can write your paradigm there is one paradigm it is one paradigm which represents the formal era right this is called perspective when you bring this is called perspective in the answer read right. and this is how it should have been <coughs> orthodoxy represents <coughs> formal era the most glorious era in public administration right his try to achieve perfection his try to build read principles techniques tools read so that administration on the one hand can become a science or scientific discipline and on the other hand organization can achieve efficiency and productivity this is how it should have been written read isn't it second paragraph orthodoxy right what is orthodoxy so orthodoxy term is used generally because they are conservative they are known as conservative thinker since they are deterministic read right. structuralist formalist bahut sare naam hai take any one name borrow it from somewhere from some people read right. so that's why it is known as orthodoxy because they were trying to achieve <laughs> right perfection build most rational organization to achieve efficiency and productivity right <coughs> and their aim was also to make public administration science in fact their most important paper published in 1937 was papers on science of administration ye kyun nahi yaad aata hai read so papers on science of administration read this is how <coughs> this phase has also some prominent features the features we likh do the write some their prominent features what the prominent features they were known for read <coughs> and then begin with after this orthodoxy era or kaise second paragraph shuru hoga it's not ki first ended second begin there should be some link no aise mein to aise hi bataya jata hai maine bhi ek class kiya tha so the question is that ki there should be continuity right <laughs> between the preceding and succeeding paragraph no so orthodoxy ended due to emergence of other paradigms our orthodoxy was rejected because of emergence of read human relation behavioral theory read and other such approaches read 
<coughs> so <coughs> human relation behavioral system other such organizations theory so they try to <laughs> read criticize reject orthodoxy era read and they propounded their own theories models right in fact there are also some other models and approaches right beat development dynamics cpa <coughs> npa public choice approach npm governance so don't need to write in separate right in one paragraph like this there are also some other models we can say that there after orthodoxy era and <laughs> they have rejected revised they have accepted also so there are rejections largely right also there are certain level of acceptance it's not that ki they have completely rejected but they have also accept accepted some of the <coughs> features for example so <coughs> new public management will not reject taylor so it brings new taylorism for example some modern thinkers system theory does not reject <laughs> orthodoxy era right it becomes one such sub system of system right this is how so we find theory x theory y many other things name some of those theories right ki how they are let's say that ki accepting and rejecting right so we can find that ki these in nutshell we can find that <coughs> they are more of revisionist and ex expansionist even if they have rejected because classical theory orthodoxy era has become basis for their propagation of theory and analysis right whenever they have taken any approach or try to build any theory etc so they have taken them as basis of their analysis even if they reject right and in the end there is no complete rejection of them right although there can be some theories who can come in the category of let's say rejecting and trying to build a fresh but uh, by the time they build their approach it appears that ki they have also incorporated some of the approaches right it is not entirely new right and uh, therefore we can say them those who are belonging to uh, post orthodoxy era as revisionist and expansionist this is how you have to write it so it is not merely first paragraph orthodoxy second third fourth paragraph shuru ho gaya aapka as human relation theory two lines behavioral theory two lines system theory two lines npa two lines and by the end npm npm two three lines and answer ends right <laughs> so <laughs> this is how you can say that let's take next question <clears throat> governmentality so i think it, it will not right create flood like situation <laughs> so <laughs> right <clears throat> certainly i am taken aback because again since last year we have done it so we thought there will be no problem but since there is a problem so we look into but as, as of now we cannot do anything anyhow <coughs> post modern state let's take it <coughs> and governmentality the tendency towards change transformation mainly in the old understanding of bureaucracy due to post modern state and craze considering the new governmentality in conjunction with post modern condition oh so governmentality post modern condition so shuru ho gaya right aajkal whenever we find the common literature in your copy post modern it rejects grand narratives right this is how it brings other things uh, see the context also ki in which context we are writing <laughs> right <coughs> then what you keep writing jitne value based program hai government of india ke from last mile to first mile to no mile right this is how so we keep writing all these things 
एज इफ दे आर पोस्ट मॉडर्न अरे पोस्ट मॉडर्न हो या नहीं हो दो प्रोग्राम देर डोंट यू थिंक इज इट दैट कि मोदी इज फॉर्मुलेटिंग द पॉलिसी प्रोग्राम बिकॉज देर इज ए पोस्ट मॉडर्न एरा राइट अभी वो प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी ने बताया नहीं होगा उनको सो फार ही हैज बीन टोल्ड अबाउट एन पी एम राइट सो द क्वेश्चन इज बट आई हैव बीन टेलिंग की ही इज ए फास्ट इमर्जिंग विड्रो विल्सन राइट द क्वेश्चन इज दिस लेट से दैट वी शुड थिंक ऑफ कि कुछ पहले तो कुछ सम बेसिक्स आई राइट राइट so some people write some basics no doubt they have gone to this second level but they have to go to third level now right this is our third level is what exactly the question is right <laughs> <laughs> so it is like this see <coughs> there are three things governmentality one post modern conditions second right <coughs> so right <coughs> change and transformation so <clears throat> and the term is called conjunction this is how can say that so whether you are aware about when you write what does conjunction means right so uh, tendency to a chain transfer mainly in the old understanding of ubiquitous due to this right <coughs> see changes and transformation in old bureaucracy is happening due to this condition miss post modern is bringing changes in change and transformation in bureaucracy right the post modern conditions are bringing changes and transformation right <coughs> in this understanding of bureaucracy right and this change in understanding of bureaucracy right wants to bring change in governmentality right this is how it is <coughs> and again it does not want to bring only change in governmentality but along with post modern condition this is the question you can see there are many circles right you see in a linear line way no <laughs> right <coughs> so there are changes and transformation which are happening due to post modern condition right and these changes are bringing changes in bureaucracy and therefore these such changes should also bring in governmentality along with these conditions right what does it mean means in nutshell what question is saying ki your governmentality should get aligned with post modern conditions right governmentality should get aligned with post modern condition this is how the question is talking about right <coughs> so you know that it is not as simple as governmentality is about art of government and post modern is about science of government right so who will talk about culture of government right <coughs> and <laughs> then post modern is about rejecting grand narratives aur uske baad shuru ho gaya manrega se lekar right jan dhan yojana tak where is this question right <coughs> this is how you can say that how you should write it simple you should have begin after this understanding if you are able to agar aapko nahi samajh mein aata hai to answer kya hai 
say it. And once you understand, so what is the answer? But I will. It will take lots of time if I to discuss two answers. But you can imagine that there can be two answers. Both answers will be appreciated. One, ki you do not know when you are writing, so examiner will appreciate it. Second, that ki you know and read. So <coughs> at this stage, the examiner will be in partial stage of this. That ki newly introduced postmodern etc. So chalo, <laughs> they will have a bit liberal aspect. Anyhow. You write about <laughs> governmentality is about this, right? Postmodern conditions are like this, and then you should have written about the changes accordingly, right? So write some literature which is related with postmodern or governmentality, right? But that will be very difficult because they are very highly conceptual. So you will keep up writing all those things, right? How you should have written? So simple postmodern conditions, right, are bringing lots of change in the society, right. Change, changes can be considered in let's say society, like multiculturalism, right, multi perspective, right, receptive to other ideas, knowledge, values, so being receptive. <coughs> or it is about come <coughs> rejection of instrumental rationality of traditional one. The instrumental rationality of traditional one was Max Weber rationality, classical approach rationality, rationality from government, bureaucracy, organization perspective. Postmodern introduces rationality from citizen perspective. Right. This is how it is. <coughs> Postmodern conditions are that ki there are lots of changes. Right. <coughs> Those changes are linked with, let's say, many developments in society. Right. Diversity in society rather than monoculture in society. Right. So when there are diversity in society, many <coughs> values, practices, different types of governance, not only bureaucratic way of governance, right. So in that condition, governmentality cannot be from instrumental rationality perspective, right. Means government and bureaucracy will have to change. Right. Means what it is being talked is <laughs> governments or governance cannot be from a majoritarian perspective, a from a top down perspective. Right. It should necessarily be incorporating all those plural values and <laughs> let's say subjective standards and criteria right. in its governance. <laughs> this is how the postmodern condition is indicating. Like today, government cannot impose anything on citizen. <coughs> right. So there are many aspects, let's say, in our society, especially right, <laughs> that the citizens' rights are being affected. A particular culture is trying to be imposed. So these things cannot be done under this postmodern condition. Right. Similarly, let's say that ki public administration as a subject, so public administration as a subject cannot have any universal model, any universal theory. This is how the governmentality is talking. In fact, then governmentality should change to respect even government without, <laughs> sorry, governance without government. Right. Because there can be certain people who may not need government, but there can be governance. This is how the respect. That is not certainly public choice approach, right? So this it can. This is how it is trying to say. For example, if you are talking on governmentality, you can know that in India there has been certain instances of imposition of majoritarian type of role, right? So these kind of things may not be accepted in this postmodern condition, but we don't have to name that government. Right. In our examples, simply we can say majoritarian, the governmentality when you say idea behind the government, let's say that it is also coming in uh, other countries, let's say Donald Trump and talking about all those things. 
So it should not be because postmodern condition will not accept. Only multicultural society can be. Okay, so this is how we have to write in this question. Let's take next question. Right? <coughs> Governmentality is the ideology behind government <coughs> decision making. Ideology behind the policies of the government. The way government governs. How government governs in a particular manner. So there will be certain mentality behind this. Right. This is one. Second that ki how people govern themselves. The governmentality is related with not only government but also people. Right. Let's say that ki how in GNU people are influenced and they are trying to protest against government. Right. So there are other part of the country and people govern themselves. They are not necessarily influenced by the idea of the government. Rather they are influenced by their own ideas. So governmentality is indicating that. Right. So this we can say that. <coughs> yes, it can be, let's say that, ki development does not happen in some linear fashion. It's a zigzag. This is how you can say that. At times society can go downhill spiral, at times society can go in a different way. Right. So the question is that ki we cannot say that ki we are going back. Let's say that ki one, there is a one question that ki there was administrative state and you also today you talk a strong state. So when we talk a strong state, so <laughs> today, so does it mean we are going back to administrative state? No. Right. Because th situations are different. Right. So we cannot go back in that fashion. There can be some similarity. Right. This is how we will be said. Right. Next time when there will be some other question, we will deal that ki how it has certain negative aspect also. But this question does not demand, let's say that. Second question. <laughs> right. The question is talking, uh, there is a simple question that what should be the philosophical foundation of bureaucracy decision making and what are the implications for practice of applying that perspective. Right. <sighs> Some people have attempted, one, two persons have attempted good answer, specific answer. They know about those particular thinkers, so they can write. <coughs> question is that ki public administration is still grapple with this question. That ki what should be the philosophical foundation for decision making by bureaucracy? And if it adopts any particular philosophy, so what will be the implications of that decision? This is the question. Right. So <coughs> simply you should have written that ki public administration, so it has been undergoing changes since its <coughs> foundation. So when public administration was found by Woodrow Wilson, since then it has gone under changes over, let's say, that six, seven overlapping paradigms we have. So there are, let's say, six, seven overlapping paradigms. And those six, seven overlapping paradigms themselves <laughs> indicate that ki there have been some changes in the philosophy behind <coughs> the public administration theory building or, let's say, institutional concern or, let's say, locus and focus. So there have been some changes in the philosophical consideration. For instance, the relationships or the philosophical foundation in the founding era <laughs> was that the bureaucracy should remain apolitical, non-partisan, and there should be a separated se separation between politics and administration. Right. <coughs> its implication was that the bureaucracy cannot operate in a vacuum. It needs the political environment. Right. It, <laughs> there should be certain relationships between politics and administration. Right. Or the philosophical foundation which was advocated traditionally, it was not appropriate. Although this philosophical foundation continued for let's say first 40 years of public administration, thereafter it <laughs> saw its rejection, especially by the thinkers like Waldo and Appleby. Right. So you write their views, ki how they reject that philosophical foundation. Right. And they will talk that ki they should be <laughs> simple. <laughs> In fact, they do not distinguish between administration and politics. <laughs> Paul Apple by equate administration with politics. 
इट मीन्स दे टॉक दैट कि द ब्यूरोक्रेसी इट शुड रिमेन विद इन द डोमेन ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स रेड In fact, Waldo tries to provide a different philosophical foundation, and that was, let's say, grounded in social justice. Right? Social justice, humanism, that should be the philosophical basis for decision making of bureaucracy, rather than, let's say, traditional of merit and efficiency. Right? <coughs> as far as the other two thinkers are concerned, like Feiner and Friedrich, so. <laughs> they have also looked into this debate of uh, bureaucracy and politics relationships or especially the bureaucracy how the bureaucracy should work and finer will talk that ki bureaucracy should not enjoy <coughs> discretion independence right there should be intervention in bureaucracy right otherwise internal checks so internal checks may not be effective or may not work bureaucracy should have certain external checks means its role is that it can simply advise to the executive political and <coughs> it will be responsible for execution the present view of the government also somehow <coughs> so satisfies finer view right when government has spoken that the political executive has right to intervene but not interfere this can be considered right but friedrich he says that <coughs> internal check is sufficient miss bureaucracy should <laughs> exist in an autonomous environment right and it should have discretion right because internal environment or internal control <laughs> is adequate right and it can behave in a responsible way right so this is how the debate they have been talking about there are many other such debates also but since four thinkers are mentioned so we should write about the four thinkers there are other let's in fact today even today after even four thinkers its philosophical foundation is not very clear because we will find that apart from them there are some other aspects also let's say uh, <coughs> blacksburg manifesto sorry blacksburg manifesto what's the name manifesto yes blacksburg manifesto so that talks that ki constitutional governance should become the basis right so public administration should be found under constitutional governance rather than let's say management <laughs> business perspective as adopted by wilson right the wilson put its philosophical foundation in public administration as <laughs> management science approach right or business <laughs> science business administration approach but blacksburg brings public administration as <coughs> constitutional <laughs> foundation approach right so this philosophical foundation keeps changing the recent philosophical foundation is let's say that ki combination of all the three led down by somehow <coughs> minobrook third perspective right that is called old public administration new public management and new public service right and its implication is that <coughs> if its philosophical foundation has influenced public administration and when there has been public administration as management science so efficiency productivity has become important for bureaucracy and when there is public administration as management science so values have become important and when we bring all these three into consideration so it is efficiency and values so this is how you should have written about this question red <coughs> so we'll take next b question there are three parts of the question now let's take there are questions will have also some parts red why to forget all these things first is old public administration red i think it there may be different question which okay, npn paradigm is trouble it is still far too early to speak in terms of third order change keeping in right mind the fact that traditional paradigm never completely disappear simple question first is there are three variables let's say variable one npm is in trouble
थर्ड पैराडाइम थर्ड ऑर्डर और समथिंग आई थिंक थर्ड ऑर्डर चेंज एंड वी थ्री इज ट्रेडिशनल रेड दैट इज कॉल्ड ब्रीफ एनालिसिस ऑफ क्वेश्चन आल्सो रेड नाउ व्हाट पीपल आर राइटिंग इट इज एनपीएम तो ऑल फॉर व्हाट एवर यू नो ऑन एनपीएम रेड रेड hardly there is mention ki what is this third order change check your answer right but what is the main aspect of the answer third order change we cannot talk of third order change right <coughs> when one it is in trouble and it has not appeared traditional has also not appeared so should we talk of a third order change right it means the main aspect of the answer is on third order change but your main aspect of answer is on traditional versus npm then whatever you will write certainly i do not check line means i do not mark your line by line so don't feel some people who think that every line should be underlined and checked right <coughs> so that will never happen but yes your answer is checked no doubt the main problem of the answer is checked that i guess i will not miss <laughs> this is how at times it may happen because we are human <laughs> right but the question is that ab ab whatever you write usse kya fark padta hai how better answer you write usse koi fark nahi padta right because the main thing you have not understood the main thing you are not writing and even you write a weak answer but you understand this that you will get good marks better than the other people who have written all that uh, let's say history and uh, geography etc right and i don't think that it is a very difficult question is it we do not understand two a question you do not write there is no problem but three a two a question two b you do not write there is a problem right this is how we can say that this is a question you should have given more let's say attention ki yes you can write it but it is not now even when you write ki npm is in trouble so you should write ki how npm is in trouble but it is not written rather you write ki npm is not in trouble all those features so <laughs> it should be written ki why npm is in trouble and rather you should begin it although npm is one of the are the latest paradigm in public administration this is the introduction the npm is a latest paradigm in public administration or a contemporary paradigm in public administration which has brought tremendous influence on public administration right that is introduction <coughs> this paradigm has come into trouble because of following reasons to so write those reasons write the prominent one right because it has more inclination towards market it compromise public aspect of public administration this is how it is the prominent aspect should be written so it compromises the public aspect of public administration right <coughs> public character of public administration democratic character of public write the bigger <laughs> let's say aspect right so democratic aspect of public administration right and uh, it has also not been as successful the operational experience as such it has not been as successful as it promised and then you mentioned that paper kaun sa upsc wala ne means 2009 paper npm is dead long live digital governance isn't it the unit paper upsc नहीं मार्केट में और बहुत सारे पेपर हैं सो यू शुड दिस इज हाउ सो सिंस देर आर मेनी अदर पेपर्स सो दिस इज हाउ इट हैपन्स सो रेड इट हैपन्स सो यू शुड हैव रिटर्न दैट वन की इट इज नॉट एज सक्सेसफुल एंड सम एग्जाम्पल्स right like npm is dead and long live digital era governance so you don't have to prove it when you give this reference it is already proven the paper says 
rain. Then, <coughs> thereafter, emergence of some other models. It's not that if one model is there, the other models cannot emerge. Emergence of other model. Emergence of other, let's say, effective model. Rain. Or relevant model. So this is how prominent regions should be written. Rain. <coughs> that has happened. So this is how it is in trouble. Or there is an era now called post NPM era. Or there are models known as post NPM models. Rain. And after writing this, now let's come. <coughs> Whether we should talk on the third order change. It's not that when we are talking on second order, so one cannot talk on third order. Right? This is how. Because no any order is, let's say, completely successful, completely failure, completely rejected, completely acceptable. In fact, in public administration, there are overlapping traditions. Right? Overlapping paradigms, we say that. So public administration is known for overlapping traditions. Right. And emergence of multi-paradigmatic phase also. So there is a multi-paradigmatic phase. It means if there is one paradigm side by side, another paradigm can also emerge. Right. And therefore there is no question if second order is working or not. Third order cannot emerge. There can be emergence. Right. So <coughs> whether it is due to trouble, NPM being in trouble, or whether due to advancement in let's say public administration, in theory building, our quest for making public administration more efficient. Right. So all these factors are influencing and even there is a talk for third order change. Right. The third order change is known as post NPM models. And the post NPM models are known by many other names also. Right. Post NPM models so are known by this practical neoliberal model by World Bank or inclusive neoliberal model Or in UK it is known as third way right. See in UK we say it is a third way right. And this is how you should end it right. Even if you do not know this forget about it At least you know today post NPM models Great. So that should have been written. Forget about post NPM also you do not know. Great. So at least we can write that ki there can be third way change apply or let's say this. Right. So this is how it should have been written. The answer this let's take next.